Conventional wisdom holds that people want to rock the boat as little as possible during a recession. Well, now that there are signs of recovery, the theory may explain why 132 CEOs parted ways with their respective companies in February. That's the highest monthly total since 140 chiefs vacated back in September 2008. All this comes to us from a report out today from the outplacement consulting firm Challenger Gray and Christmas. The sector with the highest turnover in February was health care, followed by government and nonprofit entities, and in third was the energy industry. The report notes companies may be shifting their focus from survival now to growth. Well, for more on this story, we're now joined by Jeannie Branthover, Managing Director of Boyden Global Executive Search. Jeannie, it's always good to see you. Thank you so much for coming on. You just saw the numbers that Lori mentioned. What's going on? First of all, it's not a surprise to us. And whenever there's change that needs to happen, there's change at the top. So what's really happening, as you said, is we're going from survival to really generating revenue. And not only that, but a lot of companies don't want the same leader that was the leader when things went bad. Yeah. They want a new leader so that they look transparent, they look accountable, they look different than they did entering the bad times. So we're talking a full body makeover here, but the funny thing is this would suggest to people that even the men and women at the top are not safe. Right now, no CEO is safe, period. No matter how big your company is, whether it's private, whether it's public, it is a hot seat and a big hot seat. And they don't give you as much time as they used to to make things happen. So we're looking for change, we're looking for growth, we're looking for numbers, and we're looking for it fast. How likely are companies or how willing are they to hire first-time CEOs, CEOs with no prior CEO experience? I would say right now, they are not looking to do that. They really want experienced people that come in, are credible to the world, and it won't be questionable, why did you do this? Mm -hmm. And don't forget, when they're not bringing someone from internal, and they are taking someone external. It's very important that not only are you getting buy-in from the outside world, but you're getting buy-in internally, that there is a reason you chose this person to lead us. So a change at the top coming largely to satisfy PR concerns? Not, not largely, a lot, but it's really, can you build the numbers? Talk, That's really what it's about. Talk to us about uh, what else was included in the, in the story Lori wrote before, the, the one she read before. We've seen the most turnover in health care. Why? Well, think about it. Health care is very volatile right now. It's changing. No one really knows how it's changing. And there have been companies that aren't doing as well as was expected and mm -hmm. not turning around the way they should have. So that's why you're going to see a huge amount of change there, particularly because it's just in the news. And yeah. when things are in the news, they have to make something happen to make it better. Well, this, and that's uh, why you're seeing that in healthcare. And I would imagine this passionate healthcare debate isn't helping matters any, is it? It's, you know, it's such an unknown that, yeah. you know, they don't know if they're putting in the right person or not. And then in the financials industry, right, you have this issue. We've talked about this on this show many times already about executive compensation, especially on Wall Street. So how is that playing in? I mean, is this a way for companies to pay their CEOs less? It's a really great time for some companies to change how they're paying yeah. and not paying up front and not paying guarantees and not looking like they're bad people for doing it. So is this one of those things that when, when you come in for the interview and they want to hire you, they say, well, this is what we can offer you and really you're not going to get much more anyplace else? That's correct. First of all, you can get more someplace else. Every place is a little bit different as far as how they're paying, okay. but it is much more standard than it used to be, but much more looked at than it used to so, be. So, Jeannie, let's say you're one of these displaced or about to be displaced CEOs. If they came to you looking for work, what would you advise to them? Let's take it from their perspective. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you're a displaced CEO, right, mm -hmm. what we're also seeing is, are they taking high-profile jobs? You know, only really Thane did we see recently do that. Um, so you have to say to yourself, these CEOs are really saying, do I want to be in the hot seat? Do I want to be looked at and scrutinized anymore by the public? Many of them are either really sort of bailing out and, and lying low for a while or going into much more entrepreneurial positions that are not that visible. You're referring to obviously John Thane, yeah. formerly of Merrill Lynch, who reassumed employment at CIT. Is he the norm or is that an exception? That's an exception right now. Most of the people that we're seeing stepping down are stepping down and, and really taking not lesser jobs but less visible jobs. So whether they're hedge funds, whether they're private equity, entrepreneurial, it's something that's not as looked at.
Oh, Jeannie Brand over Boyd and Global Executive Search joining us here to talk about d d displaced CEOs.